What is going on everybody? Welcome to episode 3 of Madden Sunday School. This episode is going to be all about purple zones. So, last episode was all about flat zones, and this time all about purple zones. Now there's three different type of purple zones you'll see throughout the game, and that is going to be your curl flat, your seam flat, and your quarter flat zones. And each of them have their own unique behavior. Uh, based off of sometimes based off of you know the formation your opponent comes out in sometimes based off of the route combo uh, that uh, your opponent is running against them and sometimes uh, just based off of their default assigned behavior uh, that you're gonna see basically every single time so getting right into it the first type of zone you're gonna see is a curl flat now a curl flat uh, you're gonna see mainly in these cover three style defenses cover three buzz cover three sky stuff like that most stock cover threes will have these curl flats as their stock outside zones and you can kinda of think of them if you watched episode two with flat zones as the equivalent to cloud flats out of a cover two so they're basically gonna have the same responsibility in their name you can kinda of see curl flat so their first responsibility is dropping to defend that area of the field that would be attacked by say a curl from an outside receiver uh, but they're also going to do a good job defending those out routes those deep out routes corner routes you know c routes stuff like that as you see right here curl flat concept on the left and you're going to see the behavior that would be expected it drops back defends the curl and for the offense the right read in that scenario would be to check it down to the flat route by julian edelman right there but that is the kind of behavior you can expect out of the curl flat zones um, they're always going to drop basically to defend those e intermediate to deep outside routes and then if there are no intermediate or deep outside routes attacking that part of the field then they'll rally uh, to the shorter routes and come running up and, and make a play on the ball whether it be you know a flat route an out route a drag route coming across the field or whatever that route may be attacking that short shallow outside part of the field so uh, that's kind of the behavior you can expect nothing too fancy with the curl flats uh, probably the most simple of uh, the purple zones as you're gonna see right here go ahead put Edelman on out route and you can see how he drops back at first realizes that okay there's no other routes attacking uh, you know the intermediate part of the field behind me and then he rallies up and attacks Julian Edelman on the out route now on the right side you should see right here uh, that the curl flat route does a great job and right there Chris Hogan actually makes an, an amazing catch uh, but you can see that the curl flat route or the curl flat zone rather uh, was all over that out route so that's the kind of behavior you can expect now the next route is going to be or the next zone rather is going to be the seam flat now the seam flat is seen a lot in a lot of different zone style blitzes so a lot of three deep three under zone style blitzes cover three shells um, and then also along with plays that you'll see throughout the game that are called cover three match and so uh, the reason of uh, you know the kind of match term being assigned to these seam flats is that they do have the ability to play match coverage and what match coverage is is they basically have the ability to convert to man-to-man -man based off of certain you know pre-assigned um, what's the best word pre-assigned I guess conditions uh, that they look for in this case seam flats basically what you're gonna see is that they will convert to man-to-man -man match style coverage if they are defending a side of the field in which there are two or less routes being run so in this scenario I'm in shotgun doubles on offense so what you're gonna see on the left side of the field is that you're gonna see the seam flat convert to match coverage on Julian Edelman and then something unique to the seam flat is that it also Co like co aligns with that deep zone on the left. The deep zone on the left is also going to convert to match coverage against that outside route being run by Danny Amendola. Uh, so that's something you're going to want to look for whenever running, you know, a play with seam flats. That's something you're going to have to keep in mind. Now, another thing to note is that on the right side of the field, you might say, okay, basically, you wouldn't expect that seam flat to convert to man-to-man -man coverage, but it will in the case of if LeGarrett Blunt, since there are three receivers on the right side, you would think, okay, there's three routes being run, it's not going to convert. That's true if LeGarrett Blunt goes out on a route. 
Now, if LeGarrette Blount were to block or something, then the right side would also convert to match coverage. But what you're going to see right here, and it doesn't matter the route combo, right here you're going to see match coverage on the left side right there. You saw the seam flat turn and run with Julian Edelman. We'll take a look at it in instant replay. But you saw the seam flat turn and run with Edelman. You saw the deep zone on the left turn and run with Danny Amendola on that deep post route. And that's the kind of you know, um, behavior you can expect from these seam flats and from the deep zones on the same side of the seam flat that converts to match coverage. And you might say, okay, well, Rob Gronkowski, you know, you can see him down there was wide open on the play um, right there, just showing you kind of how uh, that deep zone also converted to that match style coverage, ran all the way with Amendola. Didn't matter that he was clearing out and getting into the part of the field that was being covered by that deep safety. That guy was playing match the entire way. And that did leave Rob Gronkowski wide open. I could have easily thrown it to Rob Gronkowski, got a rat catch, got up the sideline, and picked up, you know, 20, 25 yards here. And that's why it's important to know how these zones are going to behave, uh, not only on the defensive side of the ball, but also offensively, you can use this way to your advantage. I mean, if, if you, know how, you know what coverage your opponent has been running and you know how to exploit the coverage that he's been running, then uh, it can improve your you know offensive game exponentially uh, by by knowing stuff like this by saying okay he's been running a lot of seam flats on the outside I'm gonna clear out that area of the field and run a drag route across it and it's gonna get wide open so that's something you could look at right here it doesn't matter of uh, the inside seam flat will always match to the inside receiver it doesn't matter you know put them on an out route and in route you're still gonna see the same match style right there the deep zone defender once again, an instant replay here, matched all the way up to Danny Amendola. It didn't matter that he was going to be running, you know, right here. Uh, you can see the crisscross. It doesn't matter that you crisscross. They're still going to stick seam flat to the slot receiver and outside deep zone still going to stick uh, to the outside receiver, in this case, Danny Amendola. So that can actually lead to huge plays against this match style coverage. If you have, say, a deep post crossing from the opposite side of the field, um, because of the fact that that deep defender does match right here on the right side you can actually see uh, that they do match coverage here because of the fact I think LeGarrette Blunt was on a block and release so at the snap of the ball I think the defense read that Blunt was blocking and so that there were only gonna be two routes on that right side of the field and so they converted to match coverage but usually if you have a, a route or a formation rather with three receivers on one side of the field then you will not see that match coverage from the seam flat so in this case if I were uh, say maybe uh, to motion somebody over here say s someone like LeGarrette Blunt or Gronk hypothetically if I motioned them over to the left side of the formation uh, then I would have three receivers on that left side and therefore uh, that side of the field would no longer convert to match coverage that seam flat and that deep zone uh, would then drop back and just kind of play their normal assign right here if I were to motion LeGarrette Blunt over you could expect uh, no match coverage to take place uh, since in this case there's now three receivers you see uh, the seam flat jams Edelman off the line of scrimmage and then rallies and basically plays what would become a standard curl flat type of zone as you see in instant replay here you see the jam and the curl or the seam flat rather drops back kind of playing defense just like a curl flat defends that intermediate to deep sideline type of area realizes okay nothing's breaking in that area I don't have to worry about it and then comes up and rallies to the short outside route right there being run by LeGarrette Blunt. so in that case obviously right here you can also see no more matching from that deep zone defender uh, basically he plays off of what the seam flat does if the seam flat matches then he matches if the seam flat doesn't match he doesn't match so right there you could see he peeled off of that post route whereas before he was completely carrying it you know the entire way he wasn't peeling off whatsoever so uh, that's a type of situation uh, where you can see how the formation alignment affects whether or not the match coverage occurs and that's what you're going to see from a seam flat perspective it's all about the formation alignment two or less receivers you'll see match coverage and three or more you'll see regular seam flat so the fourth and final purple zone here is going to be the quarter flat out of cover four now you're basically only going to see this zone out of cover four style defenses it actually gets its name quarter flat uh, from the fact that you know there's four deep defenders and each one defends their quarter of the field you can split the the 
field up into four quarters with four deep defenders. Uh, so that's why this zone is only seen really on cover four style defenses. And this might be the trickiest purple zone of them all. Although seam flats can get kind of finicky. But quarter flats are also kind of odd at times. Um, basically, uh, what you're going to see from them, they also have the ability to convert to match coverage. And it's only going to be against inside receivers running outbreaking routes or running routes that attack their area of the field so for example if you were to run Julian Edelman on an out route to the left the quarter flat would convert uh, to match coverage if I were to run Rob Gronkowski say on a drag route going across the field you might say oh it's not an outbreaking route by an outside receiver but it is an inside receiver who is attacking that outside quarter flat area he will still convert to match coverage uh, against an it, against a drag route, a shallow drag route by Rob Gronkowski. It attacks the flat quick enough. I think the game just picks up on right here. You're going to see how he clamps down, and now he's running with him. My playmaker Gronk up the sideline, and he's running stride for stride with him up the sideline. So I think the game picks up on basically if there's an inside receiver who attacks this area of the field within you know however many seconds of the start of the play then you'll the the defender converts to match coverage right there you see once again he converts to match and he's running all the way up the sideline with Gronkowski so that's something to take note of and it's only something to to really remember for quarter flats is that it's only for inside receivers the quarter flat will not match coverage against outside receivers ever it only works if it's an inside receiver. So right here, Julian Edelman on this out route, you can expect the quarter flat to convert to match right there. He he has ma now matched him, and he's going to run up the sideline with Edelman, try to squeeze that in there. But So in this scenario, out of this formation, the only receivers, hypothetically, the quarter flat can match to are Julian Edelman and Gronkowski right here, Amendola on the out route, and you see there's no match coverage. Now the quarter flat will still rally and play it, but as you can see right there as I throw it straight at him, um, you can see how he was playing basically a curl flat style of defense. He sank back, was defending, you know, the deep intermediate outside, uh, you know, sideline type of area, and then rallied up uh, to the out route by Amendola. He didn't immediately convert to man-to-man -man on Amendola or he, he never did throughout the entire play. He was only playing basically a zone. And, and the thing to remember is that whenever these zones, quarter flats and seam flats, don't match coverage, uh, basically their default play like behavior is similar, uh, identical essentially to a curl flat. So it's still going to be remain the same right here. As you see, uh, no match coverage on LeGarrette Blunt right there. But um, it's identical to a curl flat. So it's still going to play where you it sinks back to that short or rather the intermediate deep part of that sideline and then rallies up to the shallow routes if there are enough no routes that are attacking you know that intermediate to deep part of the sideline so that's something to remember basically they all have the potential to just play like a normal curl flat and then based on other conditions they have the ability uh, to go ahead and convert to man-to-man -man coverage so definitely trap style coverages uh, can be very tricky uh, to, to both you know play as and then play against I mean it's kind of a double-edged sword because uh, obviously it can really confuse your opponent if they can't get a beat on what kind of zone it is and what kind of coverage it is post snap since it, it can be a very trap style coverage with you know your opponent snaps the ball okay it looks like zone but then you know this guy all of a sudden converted the man to man and I don't know what read to make but then it can also be double-edged sword because if your opponent does know the behavior of these zones and how to exploit them then it could leave some huge holes in your defense because of the fact you do have you know zone defenders who are straight up leaving their zones to convert to man to man coverage so it can both uh, be good and it can be bad. It just all depends on the situation. So it's really good to have this knowledge about you know how to how to defend against it right here. Once again, you're gonna see uh, the match coverage on Edelman on the out route and uh, basically, I mean the the behavior is pretty consistent. You're you're always gonna see kind of that match style coverage against uh, right there right here against on a curl flat concept. You're still gonna see the match style coverage now. Uh, this might be counterintuitive you might think oh well a quarter flat like the zone that it looks like it's going into uh, looks like it would be in a prime position to defend against you know the curl route on the curl flat concept but because of the fact of the rules that state okay if there's an inside receiver running an outbreaking route towards you know that 
curl flat area, then you must convert to match coverage. That leaves basically the curl route wide open. It's it's as if essentially that quarter flat wasn't even there. If that quarter flat was man uh, man to man assigned on Julian Edelman, then obviously the curl route would look wide open because there are no zones in that area. There's no you know there's no curl flat. There's no cloud flat. There's no defender even manned up on the curl route. It's it's going to be wide open every single time. At least in a seam flat scenario, the outside would also match. So you kind of get a man-to-man -man scenario on both the flat route and the curl route, uh, but in this case, uh, that doesn't happen. And so every single time you can you can really predict the behavior, you're going to be able to hit that curl route. So it is good to know. And like I said, the behavior is pretty predictable. Sometimes, uh, you know, an outcome might happen. They might match when you don't expect them to, or they might not match when when you do expect them to. So it, it's always kind of, uh, it, it can get kind of, it, it can become a guessing game sometimes in certain scenarios. Obviously, there's so many different scenarios you could line up to try and manipulate these zones uh, that it can be tough to kind of uh, go through all of them in your head and, and think and know exactly what's going to happen in every single one uh, just because of the fact it is AI behavior. So it can be tough sometimes, but I think it is good to know about these zones and I, I think obviously any knowledge uh, that you can have is, is good knowledge so I hope you guys enjoyed the video definitely let me know what you guys think um, let me know what I can do better for future videos um, next video I'm gonna be going over those yellow zones in the middle hook zones I think there's four different types of hook zones so be on the lookout for that next Sunday but like I said hope you guys enjoyed the video a lot definitely let me know what I can do better for future videos and until next time guys take it easy